Welcome back to another instalment of Project Amber's Late Night Stories. The last one went down so well and you all asked for more, so I'm going to keep doing them. This one also involves a cliff, so it sort of seems like the first one, but we're in France, not Italy, and instead of me and Lance nearly falling off the cliff, it was the entire van. Yeah, this story holds some words of warning for those of you that, like me, want to go off and adventure into the wild and don't really have much thought process that goes into it beforehand. I learned a lot of lessons from this one. So these late night videos are basically all about stories that I didn't have any cameras on at the time or didn't have enough footage to really tell the story. Just didn't capture it basically, but well worth sharing because <laughs> cause when you travel around and are as idiotic as me, um, some interesting shit happens. So I cast you back to May of 2018. I'd made my way across the French South Coast and was heading to Verdun Gorge. Blew my mind, frankly. I had no idea that's what the South of France had to offer. But before I'd managed to get to this really secluded park up, I'd scurried on the map for a while and, and found um, there'd actually been a rock slide over the road. But the police were there, it was all being dealt with, and they were just telling all the, the traffic to turn around. So I turned around, pulled over, got on the sat nav, and uh, there was two options. One was to go back around the mountain where I'd just come, um, and that was adding an hour and a half onto the, the journey. Uh, bearing in mind I was like 15 minutes away, I wanted to get pulled over. The other option was an added 20 minutes, and it went kind of down this little rural lane. Rural, rural, rural lane. Lane. Lane, lane, lane. So naturally I took the 20 minute option, didn't I? So I turned around, made my way down off the main road. There was more police further down the road stopping people going up. They looked pretty stern, but I gave them a wave on the way past and in return I got the most enthusiastic three waves back. Like, it was really nice. Turned off the main road and started making my way down these, this little kind of rural track. Now bear this in mind because it will get more relevant as the story goes on. At the time it was about half five, quarter to six. Um, we were up in the kind of really mountainous area and yeah, the sun was starting to go down, so not really an ideal time to be mooching around roads you don't know. <laughs> so I'm making my way down this track and there's not a lot about at all. Um, I end up going past a farmhouse and that's about it. Then the tarmac stops. By this point, it was kind of like I drove down for a while before I'd realised and there was no turning points for ages backwards. Uh, and it was single track. So the tarmac stops, it just goes to a dirt track, and I'm like, well, you know. Now any right-minded person would have thought, right, okay, it's going to be a bit of a ball ache, but let's reverse back to the nearest turning point and turn around and park up for the night. Me? No. I carry on thinking, ooh, adventure. Now the dirt road was not very well used. Um, there was grass growing in the middle of it, there wasn't a lot coming down there for a while. Um, oh, and it started raining. <laughs> so. As I'd come up this like hill, it started to piss it down. I come down it. So even if I wanted to reverse now, no chance. This thing in reverse, because it's rear wheel drive, useless. No, wouldn't have done it. So this track went on and on and on, and it got more and more bumpy, more mountainous, uh, to the point it just got to like cliffside, dirt track, cliffside. And uh, you know, I was looking out a fair way I was, I was quite high up and um, on the map it was still saying it was a road it was just like yeah keep on going and it was only saying like 10 minutes so I was kind of like right I can see the end it's not that bad I'll just get down here and it will just be a bit of a laugh no it got to the point where I was having to push tree branches out of the way there was like brooks and streams going through the track like at one point I come to a hairpin and there was a big tree here overhanging. A stream had come down and worn some of the track away. Uh, so it was kind of like on the angle. It seemed all right, but there were some pretty big rocks under that water and I was like bouncing all around, trying to avoid all the foliage and rock faces. And, oh, But I made it round this uh, hairpin just about. At this point, I was kind of finding challenges like that, uh, overcoming them. And I was getting a bit, you know, this is going all right, this, this is good fun. It was a good day at this point. There was nothing that was possibly going wrong. And I got to the point where there must have been about three minutes left of the track. And the track was really like under a canopy, so it hadn't had a chance to dry. It had been raining for a while, so the track was starting to get a bit boggy. But the van carried on. Um, 
up until the point where I came to two significant puddles in the lines of the track. And I remember thinking they may present a problem. So I carried on, gun ho, gave it a bit of beans, and the van just plummeted in down into these tracks. It was pure bog. And uh, bearing in mind, you know, we're talking dirt track and then it's just slid away. There's a lot of this going on in my stories where <laughs> the land disappears and why am I there? This time wasn't my fault. I'm blaming Google. Totally my fault. So it's buried down a little bit. All of the underbody, the van is, is in mud, but it's carrying on. And I'm thinking, okay, just maintain, just maintain. And then at the crucial point, just as the front wheels kind of lifted back up a little bit, I was like, all right, I'm nearly out. The um, traction control kicks in, kills the power to the wheels momentarily. It lunges to a stop. The wheels spin. Done. Instantly, I know this isn't going to be an easy one. I am pretty damn stuck right now. And I kept trying to get the van going, rocking it a little bit, but it wasn't going anywhere besides sideways. The moment I'd start moving the wheels, the rear end was just spinning and lunging towards the edge. And it was only as I got out of the van and had a look what was going on that I really started to shit myself because the wheels were in a rut, say here, and it had pushed all the ground up and over the edge. So every time the wheels were spinning, they were just pushing the ground out and the van was lunging more and more sideways towards the edge. I think it's at this point when I took a photo. I didn't take any videos because at this point I still wasn't really doing YouTube anyway. But more to the point, I was starting to really panic. It was like, oh shit. So first thing I do is put my hazards on. What? Like anyone's going to be as stupid as me to come down this dirt track and get stuck in traffic. I get on my big boots and start making my way down the track towards the road thinking that, you know, there's three minutes left of the track. All I've got to do is get down to this road, hopefully see someone with a four before, they can come up, we'll get my big tow rope out and I'll get out and I'm away. I'll have like a land anchor that won't let me go off the edge. But no, the mountain had different ideas for me. Um, now I'm on foot, this walk is taking longer than three minutes. It's a good 10 minute walk until I get to the road. And I'm thinking, I'm still really high up. Why am I so high up? This, this, this can't be right. And it's as I get to the corner that I realise that what was once a really steep track that was probably pretty impenetrable anyway had suffered a landslide and there was nothing left. And it was like this, big boulders, all this sort of stuff. And it's at this point that panic level two starts to set in. I genuinely started looking at it like, mm, as long as I'm good on the brakes, if I can get the van out of this, I, I can make it down here. I'll go. Trying to weave my way down a landslide in a five ton van. I'm so glad it didn't even go forward anymore. So I'm crawling down all this slate and landslide and God knows what. Get down to the road and it's sort of like an S bend. So I'm only seeing a horseshoe shaped bit of road. The rain luckily had now stopped, but it was silent. You'd hear a car a mile off if there was one. I spent half an hour waiting. Not a single car went past. I had to face the facts there was nobody coming down that road tonight. Um, to put the area into perspective, it was <laughs> a mountain. That was it. Um, this road connected one side of the mountain to the other. There was no houses on it. There was nothing. Barring one, as I'd come down the track, I had noticed, looked up the hill a considerable way and noticed a barn. I was thinking, I need to get to that barn. It could just be a barn, but it could be a conversion or it might have somebody there. Start making the climb. Had to make it back up the 50 foot landslide. That was a challenge. By the time I got to that, I was starting to ache, but I still had a good 10, 15 minutes till I got just to the van. God knows how long it'd be till I get to the house because I saw that a while away driving. As I reapproached the sorry state of my van, leaning over and flashing away, I'd noticed it was leaning a little bit more than when I'd left it. And as I got round to the back, the ground had moved even more. So we've skipped a few levels. We're not on panic level three. We've gone a few more. I was papping it. My house was about to go off the cliff. So I'm getting rocks and like chocking all of the wheels up. I'm trying to reinforce the, uh, the bank that was just slipping away. And I get my tow rope out and try and attach it onto this like root that 
may or may not hold, I have no idea. Now at this point the sun was still out, but it had gone behind the hill. So I had maybe two hours of light left at tops. So I set off for the house and in my panic, I didn't think to get a coat. I didn't think to pack a bag of like water, nothing. And although this video is joking, that bit of it was stupid. I should have really packed a bag because I was potentially walking for I don't know how long, could have got lost, anything could have happened. So yeah, I learned another lesson there, which is always pack some stuff. It turns out the house wasn't that far away. I'd say it was about half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, but I had walked down the track as far as I could until I saw the house. I found this adjoining track that I assumed was going to the house because it was up a hill but mountain hill, so it was just kind of weaving. Most of that 40 minutes was climbing that hill. By the time I got there, I was drenched through, dry mouth, couldn't breathe, knackered, even the dog was like, shit. But to my relief, there was a lie on in this building. It was a barn, but it had just been converted into a B&B. &B. Hadn't opened yet though. And as I knocked on the door, looking like a black current, um, this girl answered the door, I think she instantly sensed that something was very wrong and went and got a mum. And between the two of them, roughly knowing English and me not really knowing much French but the odd word, and I'm trying to explain what's going on but I couldn't even get my breath back. So the girl runs into the kitchen, comes out with a big jug of water, a glass and uh, like a bowl for Lance and she gives us some water, bless her. I get my breath back and I'm trying to explain using like gestures and the odd word and we're slowly getting a uh, thing going. And the woman turns around and says, there is no road down there. And I said, no, I know. It, trying to explain that I know, but Google told me there was, and I'm an idiot, and I just, I carried on. You know, there was no chance. She then explained there hadn't even been a road down there since 1903. She called her husband, and her husband basically said, well, he needs to call his insurance. And she relayed that to me, and I was like, love, what are the insurance going to do for me now? The van is falling off a cliff. This barn was the only building on this side of the mountain. So the panic started to set back in again. She had like a little Fiat Punto or something. There was no chance that was going to pull me out or even get down this track. But then she said, I know of maybe one person that can, can help us. And it's the only other house on the mountain. <laughs> and it was the farmer of the farm I drove past right at the start of the track. Uh, she had his number. She knew him quite well. So she called him up and what a dude, he explains, he's, he's going to make his way down the track in his tractor and pull me back. I couldn't thank him enough. There was like 70% of the panic and worry written off. 30% still there because I wasn't sure if we were going to get back to a van or if it was going to be down in the lake at the bottom. I, so I start making my way back. I'm like ready. I'm going to go meet this farmer and they call back for us to wait and they're getting like coats on and stuff and <laughs> they want to like come down with us and I'm like this is a really steep hill like please it's, it's fine but no they wanted to come I think for the entertainment value they were nattering away back down this curly track sometimes talking to me sometimes talking between themselves I'm pretty sure they were calling me all of the names under the sun at this point we get back down to the junction where I joined the track I was stuck on and we wait tractors are not fast and tractors on this particular track are really not fast. We were waiting a good 20 minutes for him to arrive. That was 20 minutes spent with a lovely but French lady I didn't know and her daughter with a huge language gap. So it was just kind of like, yeah, <laughs> mm. But mercifully the silence gives way to the slow low rumble of a tractor engine and this huge wagon just comes barreling over the hill. It was like, oh, saviour. Um, he gets out instantly starts talking to the woman they're all having a giggle and at this point I know they're talking about me because I'm sure I heard along the lines of English idiot and I was like Do you know what I'll take it the farmer had brought his girlfriend along they're all there having a lovely chat and laughing away and I'm just there like yeah can we go the, the van is falling the tractor sets off and man what a machine I mean this thing where I was having to like crawl and, and maneuver around he was just plowing straight through he just didn't even make a dent he gets down to the hairpin where the tree's overhanging and there's the stream, the bit where I struggle to get around and he just lifts his forks up and smacks half the tree off and it just falls off down the mountain. You're like, well, that's one way of doing it. We carry on and eventually you can start to see some red lights and some orange flashing lights and we were there. Get out my big five ton uh, tow rope and start tying it off to the chassis. 
the other end's being attached to the tractor fork. I get in, start it, stick it in reverse and stick my thumb out the window to say I'm ready. And uh, the tractor starts pulling. The van instantly starts to pull out of the verge and level up again. And I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Followed by a massive snap and then the van lunging back into the rut. My six ton tow rope had snapped, gutted, but the farmer gets out and starts unraveling this chain. And I'm thinking, we should have used that first time. Got the chain attached to the chassis, but at this point I'm thinking, right, the van's slammed up against that verge. So if we're not careful, he's going to pull and it's going to pull me out and over. There's not much of that verge left now. And my fears are confirmed because I don't pull back out and I level up. I just come backwards and I can feel the one side lifting and I'm going over that side and I'm shitting my pants, hitting the brakes, like stop, stop, stop. But then the back end of the van just like yanks square. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ and uh, we're away. I mean, hitting the brakes was pointless. They did nothing. I had all four wheels locked and the tractor was still like, yeah, whatever. It could well have been pulling a marshmallow. I feel the back of the van lift up and I'm out of the bog, but he's still got to pull me at least three quarters of a mile. I'm currently being towed backwards. <laughs> what a foolish move this was. So we'd left a fair bit of slack on the chain. It was like a, a car's length. Caught the odd boulder with my wheels and it was a bit bouncy, but all was going all right until we got to the dreaded hairpin. So the tractor's gone around the hairpin and he's gone under the tree and over the stream and he's now over the other side. I'm now having to like desperately try and steer, but the front end is too close to the bank. So I can't actually steer anything and he's still going. The van's ass is now in the stream and going towards a rock and I'm thinking, shit, I'm in the wrong position here. But the chain then tensions just as the tractor's at about this point. And then all of a sudden you feel the van's arse just go bang. I've done a full 90 degree reverse drift and I'm now going this way. That wasn't done without damage though, because in the momentum of it all, it had ripped the back panel of the, where the lights are on the back of the van out. So that was now just flapping in the wind and the uh, rear wheels had slid across, smacked the bank and a bit of like tree had wedged in the tire. I'd later find this out once we'd like, kind of pulled out. This whole corner got slid into the tree, smashed a light, put a dent in there. Also went for a bush, so there was scratches all down here. It was a mess, but I didn't care. I was getting out, it's fine. The next challenge came in the form of a hill. And at this point, the, the track had gone a little bit loose. I think the tractor kept losing traction or something because it was brutal. I thought it was gonna yank my chassis leg out. We were going up and then bang, and then yank backwards again and then bang. Oh God, but that was it. We, the top of the hill was the, the turning, um, we'd made it back up. But as we unhooked the van from the chain and I went to reverse it out of the way, it just kept going ding, 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 and not going anywhere. And what had happened was as I was desperately trying to get out of the ditch and forcing the van to try and move, I had weakened the clutch, which if you watch some of the early videos, you'll know that the van's whole transmission was destroyed from pretty much day one. So yeah, I'd overheated and spanned the clutch. Now it happened before and most of the time you could get it re-going again. You'd, you'd have to like just really slowly ease it in on a flat surface. And uh, once the van got going again, it just start to, you know, retread itself, I guess. But now I had to go in reverse on a rocky track. So it was kind of chugging and going and then eventually it was getting more, getting more and then bang, it just shoots backwards. Everyone just stops talking and staring at me. <laughs> at this point they're like, who the f is this guy? I get it out of the way into the verge, slam the brakes back on, like go and get something to give this farmer for helping me. Get into the safe and realize I didn't get any more cash out from when I'd paid the Spanish Mercedes, I don't know how many hundreds of euros, ironically, to look at my knackered transmission. So I had no cash and I was just like, oh my God. I did, however, have four big bottles of Desperados and I was looking around and everything else was like food or sweets and it was like, I can't just give him sweets. So I get the four big bottles of uh, Desperados and I just bring them out. And um, he seemed pretty thankful with it. I mean, I would have liked to have gave him, you know, some fuel money towards it, but unless he had a bloody card reader on him, that wasn't going to happen. So he takes the Desperados and I'm saying, thank you, thank you, mercy, mercy. And um, he kind of says, go on, off you go kind of thing. <laughs> get back in the van and the van's kind of junking away and I'm trying to wave on my way back. I mean, Jesus, this could have been the first time they've met an English person. It was rural. And that's what they got. Me. <laughs> Bye. Now you think it's over. It's not. I still have to get down this track. And at this point, the sun is really going down now. It's, it's getting dark. 
So I'm giving it the beans a little bit because I know all the water has now come down and there's gonna be more bog. So if I don't hit them with enough speed, I'm gonna get stuck again and block the tractor because he has to come down the same track. So there was that awkward kind of midway line of go fast enough to get through the puddles, but not so fast that you're gonna slide and go off the edge. It's going all right and I'm on this fairly rocky bit as I'm coming up a hill. Can't see over the crest and as I get over the crest, the van just sort of like loosens a little bit and the back end's going a little bit. I let off and try and lose some speed, but bad move because now I'm oversteering and I shit you not, here's the edge and my front tire does this. Now at this point I did have a camera on and I'm not sure if I lost that in the great deletion of my Project Amber hard drive in Scotland. I will have a dig through and if, if I do have it, obviously there's gonna be clips. I've learned a big lesson today. I've got bits of trim hanging off. Um, one of my wing mirrors is bust again. Uh, one of the lights on top is burst. The clutch, I mean, I don't know what is going to happen to that. I mean, I tried reversing while I was being towed, but you could just hear it raunching and banging. And I'm going to throw some lights on. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. So in the end, I just had to kind of stick it in neutral and let the, the tracks do all the work. Oh! I don't want to be stuck on this. Oh, shit! We're sliding, we're sliding. Shit! There are. Uh, okay, I have to take the worst of this bit. If I stop, I'm going to spin. Come on, keep going, keep traction, keep traction. Oh, there's the farmhouse. We're in the clear. I caught the bit on camera where the van just goes and I'm like heading towards the edge. I gave it full left, planted my foot and somehow it managed to just pull itself back on. We come down, back up and there is the farmhouse. There is the tarmac. We're done. I'm like, oh my God, I have survived. Back on solid ground, I get out, start doing a damage assessment to the van. Can't really see it, think f it, let's carry on. Now from leaving the rock slide that covered my original route to this was about two and a half hours. I recall just before that point, there was like a little alcove where I could pull in and I was thinking, right, I'm just gonna spend the night at the side of the road on there and then see what happens the next day, whether to go back or see if they start clearing the road. I get back up there, the road's already been cleared. I must have turned around and then the recovery team come and cleared it all away. I could have waited probably half an hour to an hour and none of this would have happened. Just, oh, I'm just driving past it like you mother f Park further on down the hill, turn everything off, get in the back and I pour myself a big glass. And there it is, story told, the journey continues. I checked over the van the next morning, the damage was, um, there was enough of it, but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. Well worth not turning around though, because the park up that I then pulled over, and I think I spent a week, I didn't want to do much driving after this had just happened. I'd pulled up at a big reservoir, it was huge. I can't remember the name of it now off the top of my head. Um, but every 10 years, they actually drain the entire lake and to do maintenance to the dam and all that sort of jazz. And when they do, it revealed the old road. They'd just flooded this entire area and there was still like dead trees, bridges, the road, signposts, old trailers. There was so much at the bottom of this lake and it had been completely drained. So that was mine and Lance's walk for a week at the bottom of this lake going over old bridges. It was really cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I um, didn't enjoy that at the time, but it's been interesting to revisit it. If you did like it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. And if you remember a story from the old videos that you'd like me to elaborate a little bit more on or have got a, an idea that you'd like me to do, uh, drop it down in the comments. A lot of you mentioned on the last one about revisiting the girl in the woods and, <laughs> oh, that video has become the bane of my life. But you're asked for it, so yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably do that one next. Have yourselves a very good evening or whatever the time of day is while you're watching this and I will see you next time.